This is our local radio club, the Sandusky Radio Experimental League, call sign Whiskey 8, Lima, Bravo, Zulu. At one of our regular weekly meetings, a member asked this question, which led to a new way to deploy a POTA antenna. That's Kaufman, K-8-D-Z-L. My question is, is if you were to lean a vertical over from vertical to 45, would you get any invis qualities from that antenna? And if so, how effective would it be? Well, the uh, antenna type that Chris was referring to, the Envis antenna, uh, this stands for Near Vertical Incident Skywave. And uh, in the old days when people couldn't get their antennas very high, um, this is their home type antenna, uh, we used to refer to them as cloud warmers uh, because the radiation tended to go up at a steep angle you know, rather than a very low takeoff angle. The incidence angle was very high, so uh, the RF would tend to heat the clouds. But for a uh, portable situation like POTA, uh, you might want to work close in rather than DX all the time. So if this is the Earth and that's the ionosphere, when you have a low takeoff angle, you, your RF skips over a very long path. But if your takeoff angle is near vertical, then you get things like this, where you can work uh, closer in. So for POTA, this might be desirable compared to uh, a big skip. Now, this is where the uh, majority of the RF is. Of course, there's always multiple paths. So, but typically you look at the strongest lobe of the antenna and uh, call that the takeoff angle. So uh, for the POTA antenna, to make it an envis, uh, we need to figure out what angle we can bend the antenna over, and uh, then we can model it and see how it's going to work. My uh, POTA antenna is the uh, Amritech uh, tripod base uh, and the Easy Stinger uh, vertical whip. and. Uh, it comes with uh, these pins to go through the uh, ends of the legs uh, to hold everything down uh, when necessary. And uh, right now uh, we have uh, nasty weather outside. And uh, I forgot to, to uh, make a recording of uh, what I'm about to do when the weather was decent. So. Uh, I have to uh, do this inside. I can't use those pins, so I'm going to use ankle weights. So what I'm going to do next is remove one of the legs, uh, tilt everything over, and uh, set the hub on a uh, two by four. So I'll do that off camera. Okay, there we are. One leg removed. The hub's resting on a small piece of two by four, and uh, here I've set up a protractor to measure the angle and it turned out to be 45 degrees. In my uh, last video, which is linked below in the description, I showed how you can make your antenna independent of ground as a counterpoise by using a single tuned radial elevated off of ground. And uh, if you haven't seen that video, be sure and watch it. And what I'm talking about in this video will make a lot more sense. At any rate, by using uh, a single elevated tuned radial, uh, you can make a vertical directional and pick up some gain. So with our tilted over vertical, I still plan to, here's our tilted vertical and here's our feed point. I still plan to use a tuned elevated radial uh, so I can be independent of ground as a counterpoise and get gain. And I suspect the tilted vertical will give us much higher takeoff angles and uh, still have some gain. I almost uh, forgot, uh, your coax uh, will need a common mode choke to uh, prevent the coax from acting as a grounded radial. So this is what I'm going to model using EasyNeck 
and uh, we'll see what things look like. Okay, we're going to launch Easy Neck. And uh, this is a file that I made up uh, vertical with one radial at 45 degrees. So there's our wire list. And let's view that antenna. Okay, here's the, uh, the, the whip itself, and here's a radial. And the radial is a quarter of a foot or three inches off the ground here and two feet off the ground here. So let's see what the 3D plot looks like. Let's go plot type, 3D. And then we go here for the far field plot. So that's what it looks like. And you can see we have quite a bit of radiation going straight up and a lot in this direction and uh, greatly reduced radiation in the reverse direction. So let's uh, look at an elevation. Far field plot. Okay, it's saying our maximum uh, point in our uh, signal strength will be at 47 degrees and that we have a great gain of almost 4 dB and that's compared to a minus 0.25 dB for a vertical vertical. <laughs> so and notice straight up we're only 2 dB down so we still have 2 dB of gain even straight up and this lobe here has a, a fairly low takeoff angle looks like about 15 degrees so let's look at uh, an azimuth view. Okay, and it wants to know at what elevation angle. So we'll use our, our 47 degrees. And let's plot it. Okay, here again, the strongest point is almost 4 dB again, and all the way around in this direction, we're only 2 dB down. Uh, but notice straight behind, we're down 26 dB. So at, at that elevation angle, we have uh, very little radiation in the reverse direction uh, for this antenna. So I would expect uh, we would get a lot of uh, stations all the way around here and very few in the uh, reverse direction. Okay, next let's uh, look at the SWR. It's the whole way across the uh, 20 meter band. And you can see we're less than three to one the whole way across. And uh, so that puts you in the range of the typical 100 watt transceiver with the built-in tuner. Most of them are capable of tuning a three to one. Now a, uh, a low dipole, a, like a 20 meter dipole at eight feet high uh, would have a similar SWR. But by the time you get to six feet high, uh, it's gonna be a, an SWR of 3.6. So uh, just so you know, uh, very low dipoles make good sky wave antennas, uh, but uh, you might need a tuner. In early September, there was an event called the Ohio State Parks on the Air. Our club decided to participate in this event and do normal POTA at the same time. We rented a shelter at East Harbor State Park, which is on the shore of Lake Erie. We had four operating positions, and this one is mine. We had various members come and go throughout the day. We had a couple uh, uh, N-fed antennas up in the air. This event gave me the opportunity to try out the 45 degree vertical concept. My non-vertical vertical was aimed due south. I made 65 contacts during the event with this setup. 
here I've plotted my uh, 65 contacts on this U.S. map. It's only the uh, four contacts in Ohio that are located uh, accurately within the state. That's because they were in parks and I could locate them. All the contacts out here, I just put a dot within the state and did not try to physically locate them. That would have taken a lot of work. Now, most of the contacts you can see, this, this circle is a 400 mile uh, radius and this circle is a 1000 mile radius. And you can see most of the contacts are within that range. And that's pretty close in for 20 meters. Now there's a few contacts way out here and uh, that's probably uh, due to the second bounce. So we can see we're pretty much getting uh, what we expected from uh, looking at the uh, 3D pattern. Uh, notice uh, this area right up here is the highest density of the Canadian population and we did not make a single Canadian uh, contact and that's probably due to the minus 26 dB that uh, we saw in the uh, uh, reverse direction. Now these four contacts here in Ohio, by the way this X is where we were located, and these four contacts uh, were in state parks so they probably had fairly low antennas that uh, might have had good sky wave characteristics. And uh, I think if we'd have had more sky wave antennas uh, in this area, we'd, we could have worked them pretty easily. So uh, get out there and uh, bend over those verticals and uh, let's have some more SkyWave antennas so we can work really close in on uh, the POTA stuff. Well, if you like this kind of video, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And if you got anything out of this video, how about clicking that thumbs up button?